Okay. So I'm here to break down the uh the project for uh my first song, technically. Um this is kind of in the in the style of a synthet uh, sy- a symphonic even synthetic. Symphonic uh, kind of kind of black metal mixed with a little bit of death chord, mixed with a little bit of gent. Um uh symphonic progressive black metal. There you go. Um, so it starts off here with a guitar. Oh, I should probably go over just the plugins to start with. <laughs> so the plugins I'm using are Superior Drummer 3 with the Death Expansion, uh, a guitar which is Odin 2, a real ape, a final kind of little bit, um, and a guitar again which has extended articulations, another guitar which is down a semitone. Another guitar, which is uh, the clean guitar, um, a Kraken hybrid, which is the bass, an Omnisphere patch for choir, uh, a weird synth. Oh no, that's a human being. That is another choir thing. And then these are strings. Uh, and that's all the all the plugins. I also have um, some consolidated tracks. This is the choir again. Just consolidated to save CPU pretty much. And same with these. And then this is strings contact down here. Uh, I have a, a kind of crash transition which I'll get into. I have a couple of those. And that's pretty much it plugins wise. Uh, in Superior Drummer 3, um, I'm using a Gretsch square badge from the 1980s uh, for all the shells. Uh, that's kicks and all the toms. And then for the snare, I'm using Sonar Artist Series Cast Bronze, uh, stacked with a WD Collector Steel, of course. Uh, uh, Zildjian, for the most part, I believe. Yes, all Zildjian apart from uh, the, the, the China, which is a kind of a different type of crash, you could say, although it's not really. It sounds like a crash. It's used in the same context as a crash most of the time. It's just a bit more intense. It's a little bit more punch to it, really. Um, and that's a manual. Uh, for mixing inside of Superior Drummer, there's just some leveling going on and then a transient shaper and a compressor on the stacked snare, all rooted out to buses for toms, kicks, snares, O's. Uh, overheads, room mic 1, 2 and 3. Uh, the mics mics you're using here are, so you can go through and, and pick which mics you want to use. Um, so I picked uh, the kick right condenser, kick right dynamic, kick right dynamic 2, uh, and then the kick right sub, and then the left kick is also the same thing, and they're all leveled in the same way. And I have a snare cut top condenser, a snare top dynamic, a snare bottom, uh, which I'm not sure what kind of mic that is. I have a close hi hat mic, which is being routed to the to the overheads channel because I don't have enough uh, room to route them all out basically. Uh, then in the vac toms here, what's kind of interesting is um, you can get both the 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 top and the bottom of the toms. So if I so this is the top and this is bottom. That's just a little interesting extra thing there. Uh, ride is being routed to the overheads. China, uh, one and two, splash one and two, all being routed to the overheads. That's the close mics. Um, the overhead channel is being routed to the overheads. Uh, then there's a, a ambience near, mid and far, which is just there to kind of add a bit of depth, really. Then with the, the extra snares, the, the kind of stack snares, those are being routed to uh, the snare track. And you can kind of go in here and then choose which one that goes where and root instrument uh, mic tracks even. So for example here, the China goes from China into the O's and then you can pick which instruments bleed. I think that's how that works. Um, and then, so yeah, this is the kit. Uh, and then... <coughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get into the actual uh, composition, I guess. So this start bit is like a uh, a clean 
kind of ambient guitar using archetype cleaning, uh, which is a, a very atmospheric kind of, um, not metal, it's like, it, I think it was meant to be like an atmospheric kind of rock, kind of progressive kind of thing, but um, I used it here, obviously, and it's a, it's, it's a, it's built off of uh, the uh, a preset, but I've kind of I've kind of gone in and modified it, and there's a bit of delay and reverb. Uh, I've got this delay, um, which just kind of if I get rid of the reverb, it's just kind of an extra layer to it. Once again, adds depth, and then the actual reverb, which really get, makes it kind of uh, thicker. I'm, I'm I'm tweaking as I'm going because this isn't a finished mix. This is pretty early actually, but yeah. So that's the that's the first bit, uh, and then here what comes in is uh, the center guitars. So these guitars are going into uh, nameless with a uh, a preset here and then I've kind of gone in and I believe I changed the mic positions uh, I've, kind of, I've kind of brung them in close just to get a bit, a bit more high end uh, a bit more fizzy but obviously not not too much uh, these are Vibram 160s um, and yeah um, I believe no one of them isn't I thought one of them was loud and one of the other one but it's not uh, Lots of lots of mids actually, believe it or not. Um, especially even in the EQ here, I believe. Yeah, high mids. There's tons of them because I don't know. I I guess it's just stylistic of modern genres like modern gent to have a lot of mids in the guitars, which is which is strange because usually there isn't a lot of mids in the guitars. Um, presence is kind of halfway. Uh, bass is down a little bit just because it was a little bit muddy um, and then trouble is up gain is just way up just all the way they have it separated here um, I'm not actually too sure what that does but I'm guessing it's good um, and then you got a, a high pass here at uh, 76.790 hertz uh, and you can see where that is in relation to a keyboard um, which is pretty cool um so yeah i've taken away a little bit of of kind of the the center of the mids here probably because it was just a little bit too much to be honest so if we just listen to that that area uh and then without it it sounds like this just a very subtle kind of eq um that's being taken down by two decibels and then here is kind of the big eq which is five decibels ish um boosted at 1.3k hertz this is 565 um and this is this area uh, and without it it sounds like this and then with just adds a little, a little bit of presence this is actually a pretty pretty tame um EQ for, for a guitar. Usually it's pretty extensive. Um but yeah that's that for that. And then bass. Uh some people don't use this much uh distortion. I do it just because you need this kind of wall of distortion um, for this kind of genre at least <coughs> so yeah it's important to kind of just just have this between the two guitars just a wall of distortion <laughs> otherwise it sounds very weak so that's, that's all the guitars there drums oh boy which are all of these um not all of these it's 
So these are what well, I've already shown them drums. The kick here. I think this is the the most kind of Yeah, this is the most that like, I've done here. Um very strange EQ going on. <laughs> I'll kinda of go through this bit by bit. So this is the raw sound. Kind of sounds a bit like a gust of wind. Adds more smack. Uh, this is a EQ, once again. Once again, just for a little bit of smack. Uh, then a transient shaper to cut off some of the, the not needed end of the kind of kick. Some would disagree with that move. I probably disagree with myself, but hey. Uh, this is a saturator, which is basically distortion, but it's harmonic. Um, it sounds very kind of. Uh, I don't know how to explain it, but it's distortion but harmonic. Very extreme, very very extreme kind of kick here. Um, maybe overdone a little bit. Once again, this is a. Very early mix. So this is without the saturation. And then this is with. What I've done here is on the dynamics bit here. It's kind of working as a compressor. And it's kind of just taking... Um, if, if the original shape of it was kind of like up and then down and then kind of like that. It's now more like kind of that and then down. So it's kind of it's kind of holding it at the top for a little bit before it lets go, and then finally an EQ, which is just rolling off some of the the not needed muddy frequencies. Uh, so yeah, snare wise, very buzzy actually, but hey ho, this is the voice sound. Turn it up a bit. Over here, maybe. Over here? Over here. Plus the raw sound. And then I bung it down to 21, minus 21 dB. <laughs> the snare is adding presence and also boosting down here a little bit. And also here, uh, which is 1.4 kHz, it's kind of adding high mids mids, high mids, somewhere in the middle of there, high, middle, high mids, middle mids, high middles, whatever, um, and it's, it's this kind of range, just because, basically it adds smack, um, and without, it was sounding very not midi, very subtle, this here adds presence, Once again, maybe I've done a little bit, but oh well, you get the point. Devastator, which is a, a little, um, I think it's a distort, it's either distortion or a saturation. Multi band distortion unit, it's right there. Um, and that's just kind of, it's it's working as both a compressor and a kind of um, distortion, I guess. It's just kind of kind of bringing up the uh, the beef of it. So this here, uh, interesting um, uh, snare transient shaper here. Pretty fast speed. Uh, I can't remember exactly what I was aiming for, but I believe looking at it, it's something along the lines of I don't want much of the the aftermath, the aftermath, the aftermath of the the snare. Um, but I do want the sustain of the snare. So I don't want it to go... Tss. I kind of want it to go... do Kind of thing. And then you have this being sent to a reverb, which is uh, the Valhalla room. With an EQ. Getting rid of some of the... Thing, which I'm just gonna... Just gonna... Just gonna... Thank you. Thank you. Um, overheads here, uh, lots of boosting going on in the highs because it's meant for the symbols. This is most likely a weird 
clash your frequency. I don't know why I did that. Don't know why I did that. I'm sure I had a reason. Um, it does sound on its own very kind of jarry and weird, but it, it it works in the context. Here I'm getting rid of some of the uh, the transient of the snare with an opto compressor because it was sticking out quite a lot, and uh, there was nothing really much I could do about it. It was just just after the 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 EQ, the kind of places where I boosted the snare was just going crazy, and without it, like I, yeah, you can see, so when the snare hits, it goes up to there, and it usually sits around there. So I use the compressor here just to kind of, also to kind of wash out the cymbals a bit, to bring them forward, kind of thing. So it tames the snare and brings forward the. Um, uh, symbols. Uh, here, just just a lot of low mid removal, just a lot of gunk. Here, really, it looks like. Yeah, just just a ton of gunk. And then here, it got pretty much the same thing going on. I think in all of the, like, I love this expansion pack, but in all of these, the snares just way too much. So once again, I've kind of just. You know, got just push down the snare a little bit. Oh, that's with a FET compressor. Once again, with this cut at 241. Don't know what that's about, but I trust myself, so. I uh, got rid of a bit of the highs. Probably was just a bit too much. Um, and then a compressor doing, once again, the same thing. Uh, crushing the transient on the snare and bringing them forward the cymbals. And finally, on the, the far mic for the room, uh, just a big old boost in the high end. So all of the rooms together. Oh yeah, I'm also getting a little bit of latency and lag, so I apologise. Um, and that's all the drums. This is the... Oops. This is the choir. Yes, this is the choir. Lots of low mids boost. Probably some weird stuff going on down here, so I just cut it. I'm just gonna just gonna be a little bit less generous with it. And then um yeah. I would imagine this is yeah, this is the contacts thing. Which is a strings patch. Um and then yeah, these three are visors. Just just to kind of blend the bit. Really, uh, this was meant to be a compression send for the snare, but I guess I just never really did anything with it. Really, oh, I'm laggy, very, very laggy. So, I'm just gonna boost that just a little bit, just a little. Cool. <clears throat> so, with all of that out of the way, now I can actually get onto the song. Starts off with this little um, Odin patch. How long have I been recording? Oops. Um, this little Odin patch, and it's a uh, this this kind of lead guitar. It's an arpeggio. It it repeats throughout most, if not all, of the track. Okay, so it cuts out for like. Yeah, about a minute there, and a little bit here, yeah, so, through most of the track that's playing, and this song is about bipolar, so you kind of, you kind of see a lot of changes um, throughout the entire thing, this is the actual guitar, Here we have harmonics going on, which in MIDI to kind of um, make harmonics happen, you have to go down here. You have to go down somewhere. Hello? Oh, yes. Right, yes. So on, on, on this uh, patch of Odin, 
you you trigger the harmonics by making them full velocity. So then if I do the same note at a less velocity, it'll get rid of that. But usually to, to trigger those kind of things, it will uh, you'll have to place down a note down here. For example, with Odin, G sharp 2 is a bend. Um, so yeah, there's these kind of big chords. It's not chords, but it's just like stacks. Just stacks of things going on, and then here we get to this kind of um, uh, death metal y symphonic um, tremolo picky part. Which sounds pretty real, surprisingly. Um, tremolo picking, yeah, these are uh, 30, no, 16th note triplets. So, dugga 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 And those are just playing uh, that little pattern. You got a semitone here, which is really kind of tense. You got a lot of like, tense sound. Uh, minor third up to here, another minor third up to here, which is a diminished uh, kind of arpeggio here. So that forms a, a diminished chord. And then we go up to the E here. Um, and then back to down here where it's doing the thing with the semitones again. It's going to take forever. Okay. Um, then similar idea here. We're going back up to the octave. So instead of kind of yeah. And that kind of theme revolves around the whole track. Just like diminished arpeggios and um stuff like that um and then here at the start we've got a lot of power chords a lot of fifths going on um so here this is going from c to e up to a semitone to f which is kind of in the in the um in the key, I mean, that, that kind of works as a, a resolution. Um, which this song is an A, I do believe, A minor, I think. <laughs> Sounds like it. Um, yeah, and then this kind of theme of this um, harmonic on the on the on the last bar also kind of happens. Um, and then. We have this stack, which is a just a just a fifth with an F down there. Uh, so yeah, that's the guitar for the first part. Yay! Um, extended articulations here. For some reason, I split up this bit. I, be I believe it's because this other one can't go as low as the extended articulation patch on Odin. So there's that. Um, over here, we have once again the a lot of ha uh, kind of harmonics, and these these. Uh... So one way to make things sound a bit better is to sustain the notes. Um, a lot of times, it will kind of it will kind of be like this, which is just. It sounds it, like it sounds fine, but it's a lot more kind of ambient sounding if you get it as. So yeah, um, what's going on here is um, thirty second notes. No, these are sixteenth note triplets. Yes, these are sixteenth note triplets, and they kind of revolve around this. Uh, kind of uh, rhythm. Um, and then here, just going, just going for a little bit with the the sixteenth note triplets. And then um, more, more harm, more harmonics, and these kind of genty staccato kind of thing. Uh, here we've got a tritone, just just a bit tense really, 
uh, it's kind of the kind of the apex of the trackers around here. Uh, apex meaning like the the highest point of tension, I guess. Um, <clears throat> once again, you'll realise throughout most of this track, it's playing semitones apart. So this kind of da 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 da. Uh, look at the start of the jaw scene. Da 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 da. Uh, which is just, it's just really ambient, mysterious, and kind of looking down, you know, when you're on a really tall kind of place, and you're looking down, it's just like, whoa, um, if you're scared of height sounds, if not, you're a psychopath, um, so, this bit here, yeah, in the lower section, we're playing just straight fifths, as always, um, lots and lots of semitones, lots of semitones, um, here we go into an extended articulation pattern. Which might take a while to get through. So, basically, what's going on here is these kind of staccato, genty boys. Right. Um, and then, so that's playing double dropped E. Here we've got those big old harmonics. Um, this kind of this kind of thing is inspired a lot by Villarta, which is a Swedish uh, progressive metal band, is what they're, they're called. But it's very clearly gent. Um, as I was saying about the articulations down here, G two is G sharp two is uh, doing a bend. Uh, just great for building up some kind of tension and. Uh, Making things more interesting than just duh, that's duh. And I'm right here, so this is uh, G sharp 2 is a short bend, uh, and A2 is a long kind of bend. This is impossible to play, by the way, um, because you can't bend two notes like this the way that it does in this track. Like you can, t but you can bend two notes simultaneously. But the way you'd have to bend it to get this to work would be in, like, you'd have to do gymnastics. Uh, not to mention that most of the the things here, you would need seven thing, seven seventeen fingers for. <laughs> also, these kind of high pitched um, things in contrast with the low pitched kind of chugs is very very gentle here. <laughs> This is literally just like a percussive. So that's that's a thing, and then these are uh, weird alien noises. I don't know how to explain this. It's playing minor thirds, um, kind of going down. Uh, yeah, a minor third from there to there, I guess, and then um, uh, back and down the semitone. Once again, semitones. Um, and then, yeah. Oh, yeah, and this kind of um, playing two notes, uh, a semitone apart at the same time, very genty. Um, very normal for gent at this point. It's it's very it's very common to to see that kind of thing here. Uh, luckily, guitar is the most complex part of this entire thing, so it should take a long time to get through guitar, but not the other things. Hopefully, maybe. Oh, I completely forgot to mention palm mute. When you drop the 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 um, velocity down below, what's that? Uh, twenty six. Yeah, twenty six on FL. Um, you get palm mutes, and palm mutes are really great for kind of chugging and like um, instead of letting it ring out, it's more percussive. It's got more attack. Um, it's a great way to kind of like. Um, put put like a an intensity under like in, in contrast the higher notes as well it's grateful it does lots of things like here you've got open notes down here and then little chuggy bits uh, 
and then we go well high up here with these kind of um, where am I? Well, okay. Well, it's not showing up, but we go we go up high here for for more semitones. All oh, right, yeah, sorry. So here uh, we're going up here. Semitones, 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 and then this is a tritone away from the uh, the the main kind of uh, riffage point there. So, leads us on to the next section. Why are the guitars or the drums playing? This is once again um, the the um, I think it's triplets. Yeah, so these are the triplets once again. Do it then, 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 and we're just playing uh, power chords here. Uh, which are used very often to uh they they're kind of the strongest out of the out of the um keys out of the keys out of the chords that you can play on guitar fifths are just very strong and a power chord is made up of a fifth <laughs> and then we go up here just to contrast really it would have been a bit boring if I just left it empty there so I just put in a little guitar like quite simply um this song switches, just to mention, the song switches uh, between keys, I think it's four times. Um, it stays as, as, sorry, it switches modes. It stays as A something, uh, an A, some variation of the A minor scale. I think it switches uh, from A minor to Phrygian um, to, it might, honestly, it might even be Locrian or something like that. I'll check that one down the line, but... Um, yeah, it, it switches around about four times, I think I counted, between a whole bunch of different keys. There's some atonal sections as well coming up, um, but currently this this whole bit is in is in Phrygian. Yeah, just just contrasting a lot of contrasting. Once again, this is harmonics. Um, very odd to do. Like I said, like I said, there's no way this is possible. Playing harmonics, tremolo picked. Um, so that's only one. Uh, yeah, and as I thought here, we switch up to uh, tritones. Very, very, very atonal, and that's that for that little bit. It's like in a little orchestral section, and that leads us on to the little final bit here, um, which is a very <coughs> genty part. <coughs> so, what the hell is going on here? We're atonal, there's no key to this. Uh, it'd be impossible to say this is in blank key. You could say it's some variation of A minor, uh, 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 yeah, sorry, A minor with a flat five. Yes, A minor with a flat five. So maybe some form of Locrian, I do believe that is, um, could work here. If you were going to solo over it or whatever, that's probably what I'd say to go for. Um, or even, honestly, looking at it, your best bet is probably actually a diminished scale. Um, because diminished would go, yeah, diminished would fit over this. So here we switch to diminish. So we've gone, um, I think, as minor harmonic, harmonic minor, um, to to Phrygian, and now this is, um, I guess, it could be either Locrian or diminished. But I'd say play a diminished minor over this. So this is very. I'm actually just gonna just gonna. I told you this mix is not done. Um, so this is all triplets in very very odd rhythms. So da 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 da. So da 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 
da, da, da. So each one of those little clicks is a, a 16th note triplets. And it's just awfully strange. It starts here on the second 16th note triplet. So awfully strange rhythms. Um, here, this is this is just strange. We're going from a fifth to a flat five, so tritone, and then to a fourth. Uh, and then this rhythm is something I've always wanted to use in a song, and I'm so happy I finally got to use it. The da 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 that kind of rhythm. I'm actually just gonna. Do it. So yeah, we go up to here to the the tritone. Literally just bringing this up an octave. Super simple stuff. Non nothing about this composition is anything spectacularly weird music theory wise. It's just atonal, a bunch of key changes and tritones and semitones. Uh, so if you class that as advanced, then this song is the most advanced you can go. Uh, but if you class that as advanced, you need to go take a lesson. Um, once again, more completely strange, uh, rhythmically dissonant, weird riffs that just make no sense, really. But that, that's what I was going for, right? It's the, it's the end of a, a bipolar kind of song, so you needed just that little bit to contrast the rest. It does make sense. If you think about it for a while, the rhythms here do make sense. And they are singable, and it, it does make sense after a little while. But it'll take you a long time to actually understand what's going on here. Lots of tritones, lots of tremolo picking, uh, all in all in sixteenth note triplets. Um, some of them are palm muted, some of them are not. Um, so yeah, and I believe that's actually the end of the of the guitar parts. Thirty seven minutes, brilliant. Okay. Uh, guitar is doing what the bass is... No, bass is doing what the guitar is doing. Nothing changes there. Drums. I'll be quick, I promise. The kick drum is directly following the guitar part. So that's all of the kick drums, drums done. Uh, the whole thing is in 16 note triplets, apart from at the start here. Nope, it's still in 16 note triplets. So this kind of uh, right left kick kick right left kick kick right left kick kick uh, going down the toms, super simple stuff, super corny stuff, very cheesy and unoriginal. I I apologise. Um, uh, this kind of thing was actually hard to program in. It's hard to do like a, a crash roll on a or just a roll in general, like on a on a virtual drum uh, plugin. It's just so difficult to do. Like listening to it, you can kind of go, oh, that's not real, <laughs> but it works good enough. Uh, yeah, and then moving along here, blast beats, yes. Uh, using the vibe bell, this is a 16th note triplet again, split between the foot and the hands. The right hand is following the kick. The, the left hand is doing literally one sixteenth note triplet away from it. Uh, so it would be like, booga, 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 booga. Right. Can I slow this down? Way down. Right. And then if you speed it back up to normal speed. So I've done a thing here to make this more human by um, using a different snare sample each time uh, the, the, the thing rings out, or the, the, the snare rings out. It's not a different snare sample, it's just alternate hits. Um, you, could, you could even think about it as like how it would sound if the drummer was hitting a different part of the drums or the snare every time you hit. Um, and you can do that inside Superior Drummer. 
uh, by just clicking the little button that says alternate hits. So the uh, ride belt up here, like I said, is following the kick. There's a crash of some sort in quite a lot of places. It generally seems to fall on the one and the three. So that, that's just kind of there. And then uh, also here I, I back up the kick with the second kick, which is, it sounds more human to have two kicks. What I should actually be doing is this. Tuning one of the kicks very slightly lower than the other one. Here to make the snare sound and roll sound more uh, realistic, I've taken down the velocity. And I've taken down the, the velocity on the blast beats in general to make it sound more human. Uh, the vols here are randomised, so not everything is actually in time. Um, no, it was. No, it was. These are not 16th note triplets, I apologise. These are 32nd notes. There they are. Back here. No, I was right back here. It's it's sixteenth note triplet and then all of these little fills. Now I'm gonna go through and humanize this in a bit, but not right now. Um and yeah, that, that's pretty much that section. So it's blast beats, um and yeah. Uh here the drums literally follow the the, the guitar. Nothing's humanised at the moment, but I'll be working on that probably all of tonight, um, along with the mix. Um, and yeah, it's it's following the drums. There's a China up there, I couldn't find it. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, for the majority of this track, the drums are just following the, the, the guitar. On Omnisphere here, which is the, the choir patch. It sounds absolutely shocking. It's really, really bad. <laughs> it sounds so cheap. But uh, it's the best I've got. Unfortunately, I don't have a choir. Um, I have done kind of a cappella stuff myself before now, but I am nowhere near able to sing the notes up here. Not that I think any human being that I could ever meet will be able to sing that, but oh well. Oh, massive diminished stack right there. Oh, this is just tritones. Yep, this is just a massive stack of tritones. From B2 to B7. So evil, so evil. Uh, this is a F major chord, it looks like. F major. And here we go into the tremolo picking guitar riffage thing. It sounds really bad, but you can get away with this kind of stuff in a mix. On its own, like you can't, but in a mix you can you can get away with this kind of stuff. Uh, if the mix is big enough sounding, if it's really dry sounding, there is no way I would have got away with this. But I, I managed to pull it off um, using many, many layers of other instruments to, to cover up the fact that all of the instruments sound fake. So yeah, just massive stacks of like seven octaves worth of, of um fifths here. No, this is this isn't time minor triad. Well no, it's not a triad, but based off of a minor triad and then just stacked and stacked and stacked. One of the things I really love doing is this fifth in the bass. It's so powerful. Um and I I love doing fifths in the bass. Um and then yeah, that's pretty much it, actually. 
Yeah, it's just it's just alternating between A minor and F major in massive chunks of chords. Um, to lead into each section, you've got these these kind of um, build ups. And that, I do believe, is it. Uh, for guitar humanization wise, I randomized the timing a little bit for the. Yeah, for. Uh, so I'm reading. Uh, for all of the, all of the bass as well, it's randomized timing wise. I haven't got round to humanizing the drums yet. But I'm going to do timing, velocity, and kind of alternate hits, humanization, um, um, and then yeah, it, it's I guess it's it's difficult to play this kind of stuff because it's so intricate. Like it's really really easy to play it like C F and G chord progression right, but when you're like jumping from one side of the fretboard to the other side of the fretboard on the other side of the strings. It gets really difficult to play that kind of stuff because you just need like a, a massive amount of muscle memory and training to be able to accurately pull off that kind of a um, uh, from one end to the other. Technique-wise, for the for the drums, I would imagine all of this would be using mainly fingers and not um, fingers and not wrists and arms. If you want to hit hard, use arms <laughs> and wrists. Um, if you want to hit fast-ish, use wrists. If you want to hit faster, use wrists and fingers. And if you want to hit quietly but fast, uh, fingers all the way. Um, French grip technique would be used on the snares for the blast beats. Um, and this kind of push and pull technique might be used on the void where you kind of bounce a stick in between your hand. Um, and then for guitars, yeah. There's just lots of like jumping from one section to another. For the for the, the choir, I would imagine if it was going to be performed live, the bass singers would be using their subharmonic register, which is a register using phi below your actual register. Um and yeah. For the for the high singer I don't know because I've never done high stuff because I'm a male. Um <coughs> Yeah, strings copy Omnisphere, and I think that's it. But basically, yeah, uh, making it sound real is just a case of uh, adding human error, um, adding kind of um, uh, different articulations, and making sure that there's little fret buzzes and, and that kind of stuff. Um, along with obviously uh, noises happening after the fret was meant to be muted, and little scrapes and scratches and. Um, all that kind of stuff. Um, making it sound real, I guess, is important because it, it, it really defines kind of cheap sounding, I guess. Like, usually if I hear something and it sounds fake, I'm like, that's cheaply done. Like, you can do better than that, I guess. And people generally dislike fake instruments. Fake, quote unquote. Um, obviously not, uh, having any human error. It's the dead giveaway of uh, a fake sounding track and yeah. So I'm going to leave this here. Uh, if you listen to all 48 minutes of this, uh, you're brilliant. And uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs>